everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to cover a structural analysis computer program called RISA 2D or Two Dimensions. This is great if you're working on structural analysis homework, for example, and you want to check yourself. Or if you're stuck and you're worried that you've made a mistake somewhere or that you're going to do all the structural analysis by hand and it's not going to be right. Or you just don't feel comfortable with structural analysis and baby... This program is for you. It is a lifesaver. We're going to start out doing a very simple exercise. A simply supported beam with a distributed load on it. And then at the end, we're going to get more complicated. A continuous beam with much more exotic loading. So stick around for that. Let's begin at the grid. RISA is a grid program. It's all about the grid. As I move the cursor around the grid, you can see these numbers changing in the lower right hand corner. See them? It says 18 comma 11. See it? It says 23 comma 20. See it? It says 5 comma 21. Those are different spots on the grid. We're going to lay things out with the grid. We're going to put loads on it. Everything's about the grid. If you want to change the grid, you hit this button up here. See this? Boom. There it is. On the grid, you can change the X spacing. You can change the Y spacing by using these numbers right here. Type in whatever you single want, and then you hit OK, and it draws it for you. Now we're going to draw a member. Let's come over here to this button. We click it. It says draw a member. It has all kinds of different materials you can use. We are using concrete, so we hit that. We can change our concretes, different strengths if we want. We're leaving it simple. Reese is kind of complicated, but it lets me use it to be pretty simple at first. Let's assign a shape. We hit this button here, and we can assign whatever one we want. We want a rectangular shape or a circular shape. Let's do a rectangular one. This D is 8, W is 8. That's fine. Shows you pictures down here. D is the depth, W is the width. That's fine. Let's just go with that. So we've got our cross section in. Everything's ready to go. Let's draw. Hit apply. So I'm going to start drawing a member. I'm going to go 10 feet over. Uh, 10 feet over. Look at my lower grid. I went from 0, 019 to 1019. Click. Now, if I want to stop drawing, I hit the right click. Click. And it's there. I've drawn a member. Hooray! Next, we need boundary conditions. We come over here to this funny looking button. It looks like a pencil drawing a triangle, a boundary condition. So we can pick whichever boundary condition we want. We want to pin on one side, click, and look at that, it changes. My X translation, my Y translation, then I hit apply. And I come over here and I click, and look at that, it drew me a pin, how beautiful. I click it again, and I want a roller now. I hit this button, I hit apply, Pa pow Roller! That's how Risa draws rollers, these funny looking slider things, okay? It means it restrains it in the Y direction. Awesome! We have our boundary conditions. We have our member drawn. We need loads, okay? There's four ways to put loads on members in Risa. There's joint loads. That's where you apply a load to a joint. It's pretty easy. You put the load comment, you put the amount in, you hit a joint, you're there. There's distributed loads. We will be using this. But there are also something called point loads along the length, and you can also get moving loads. What? Yeah, for bridges and things like that, you can have trucks like drive over the surface of your concrete. Oh, cool, right? Let's do this one for fun. Let's apply a point load. Now, we're going to use basic load case one. That's where we kind of organize our loads. We're going to put them in, in number one. Now, the direction. This is a little bit strange, but we want the big Y. It means the global Y. Capital letters mean global. So we want the big Y. And let's, for fun, let's put in negative 10 kips. Voila! Now let's put in the location. Now we could actually put in a length, or we could put something else that's pretty cool. We can tell it, do we want it at the quarter point, at the half point, at the third point, or at some other point? Let's do quarter point. So that would be 25% away from the left hand side. So let's put percentage to five. Kapow! Now, 
Let's hit apply. Let's click. Kapow! It put a member that's negative 10 kips at exactly 25% of the span length from the left-hand side. And I could solve that, but that's not the problem I want. You know what the cool thing about this is? I can just hit Control Z and this will go away. I'll show you. Pow! Undo, it still works. How cool is that? Let's do a distributed load now. So hit this button here. It's gonna go in the global Y. We're gonna use basic load case one. Let's make it negative 10 kips. What would have happened if I would have hit positive 10? Well, it would go up. We don't want it to go up, we want it to go down. So we hit negative 10 kip per feet. We hit the apply button, click, kapow! How awesome is that? It's right there, it's ready to go. We have our member, we have our boundary conditions, we have our load. We're almost ready, but warning, warning, warning. This is the weirdest, craziest part of Risa. Pay attention. If we go up here to the LC button, okay? It's all about the LC. We're gonna have to define our load combination. This is strange. We click, we come over to our BLC. That is our category where we've been putting all of our loads. We've been using BLC one. And now we have to choose a factor. If you've already put your live and dead load factors on your loads, that's how I like to do it. I like to control and I like to factor all of my live loads and factor all of my dead loads myself. And then I just use RISA as a structural analysis program. Then I'm gonna use a factor of one. What I mean is if you wanna put 10 kip per feet on a beam and not put any strange factors on it, then you're gonna put a factor of one down. Kapoo! And now it's time to solve. So you hit the equals button. We're gonna use combination number one. We hit solve, done. That's it, not even one second, done. Let's look at some results. Come over here and let's hit this button up here. This is the model display. And then I go over to members and I go to diagram and I change none to say moment. And let's go ahead and hit the magnitude button so it shows me my amount. And look, it shows me my beautiful moment diagram. You say, whoa, it drew it wrong. Yeah, it draws it on the opposite side. Let's look at a shear diagram. We hit the shear button. Boom. It draws it. It draws this one on the right side, on the correct side. The shear diagram is correct. That's pretty cool, right? We can also make our loads go away, as in not show them. They're still there. We just don't show them. Hit the button, hit loads, say don't show loads. That was just under the loads tab right here. I hit apply and look at that, the loads disappeared. They disappeared. There's more information. We can go down to this detail button and we can click on this member and it gives me a detailed report all about the member. How cool is that? And let's say I wanna learn more about the moment. I can just click this. Kapow! And it brings up something else. I have this slider bar at the bottom. This is pretty sweet. I can move it along here and every place I move it, it tells me my moment. How awesome is that? Let's say I want to do shear. I hit shear and just like that, I move the slider and it tells me my shear wherever I want. Ha ha ha! Let's say I want deflection. I hit this button. Hoo hoo hoo! Look at this. It tells me my deflection anywhere along the length of the member. How cool is that? How awesome is that? Now, let's make things a little bit more complicated. Let's up it. But first, we get to delete. This is this big, beautiful X button. It warns me, and this warning means, whoa, you're gonna erase all your results. That's okay, I don't need them anymore. I hit this button, then I hit apply, and I can start killing things. Ha ha, ha, hoo hoo hoo, it makes you feel good. Makes you feel real good. Now, let's do a member that's much, much, much longer, like a continuous beam. So let's draw my grid again. But now, instead of beautiful 30 and 30, let's make this 30 like, mm, I don't know, 150. Then let's hit okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful grid. Do you remember what to do next?
oh yeah, I've got to draw a member. Now I can draw it wherever I want. And for fun, I'll change my cross section. Let's make my depth, I don't know, 20 inches. Now let's hit okay. Let's hit apply. And now we can start drawing. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna click this one. I'm gonna go, oh, say 38 feet over. 38 feet over. And then I'm gonna go another mm, 40 feet over. 38 plus 40 is 78. Look on the lower, hand, lower right hand. That gives me 78 is my X value. And I come over here and maybe I want this one to go to 123 and maybe I want this one to go to 150. Look at that, I just drew a continuous beam. How beautiful is that? Now I come over here to my boundary conditions. I click, I need one pinned, only one pin. Hit apply, let's make it there. Okay, now we need rollers. Let's click the boundary condition again. Let's do roller, apply. Boom, ha, poom, kapow. Now that I have my member drawn, I can apply my loads on it. We'll use the same ones we had before. I'm gonna check my load case. It's the same, I haven't changed anything. BLC is one, that's my group. Factor is one, I've already done my load factors on it. And then I'm gonna hit solve. Done! I just solved a continuous beam just like that. How awesome is that? I can look, I can see it's drawing my moment diagrams. I can pick out which member I wanna pick, like hit the detail button and say, I wanna learn about this member. And it draws it for me. It's got my moment diagram and I can find it anywhere I want along the length. How beautiful is that? I've got a shear diagram, look at that. How beautiful is that? Whatever I want. This is awesome, don't you agree? If you like my channel, please, please, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't. Go!